33 this Sunday. Time is ticking. The deadline to file your tax is now just nine days away. Yeah, today on Keller at Large, we're taking a look at the policies that impact how much you pay. Here's John Keller. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Have you paid your taxes yet? The filing deadline is just eight days away, and that struck us as a good time to talk about tax policy current and future here in the Commonwealth with the longtime chairman of the House Committee on Revenue, State Representative Jay Kaufman of Lexington, who is leaving the legislature early next year after more than two decades in the House, free at last, I guess, Jay. Well, I'm not sure about free, but different in any <laughs> yeah, event. Different, huh? yeah. Well, for most of that time, now going back to the early 90s, you've been running up against a wall of opposition to higher taxes from the House leadership, from the corner office at times, and certainly from the public. Do you believe that has changed? I'm hoping that has changed. Um, we have gone through, uh, well, let me put it this way, no state has cut its state taxes more than we have other than South Dakota over the last 20 or so years. So we've done dramatic tax cuts, uh, and yet we keep expecting to get the same level of public service from our government. That just doesn't work. There's no way we can make that work. I'm hoping that there, be, there is beginning to be the recognition that that's the case. So last year there was a commission that looked at underfunding of public education. They established the fact that we need about a billion dollars a year more in public education dollars. We have had multiple commissions, bipartisan, nonpartisan, looking at roads and bridges and public yeah. transit. They too have concluded that we need at least a billion dollars a year in greater investments. We're not, we're not investing in the way that we need to, to have the economy that we need. But you were telling me before we started uh, taping here that uh, so far it's early in the override season in cities and towns, but so far uh, over, Prop 2 and a half overrides aren't doing very well. Isn't that a signal that anti-tax sentiment is still strong? Oh, I have no doubt that anti-tax sentiment is strong. Yeah. Uh, and I think when we go to the voters and ask for additional funds, we darn well better make a good case for them. Uh, we can't just pull wool over people's eyes, I don't, and I think that's appropriate. Yeah. Um, I'm hoping that uh, sort of the national debate about government in general uh, leads us to believe that actually there is a, an important role for good government, and if we can prove that we're good government, people will come with us. Well, speaking of tax reform or ta changes in tax policy, the big one in the, our immediate future is uh, the so-called millionaire's tax, or the, right. the, fair the Fair Share, share Amendment. amendment. Uh, uh, if the Supreme Judicial Court clears the way for it to be on the November ballot, and this would impose a 4% uh, surtax on incomes of over a million dollars. Right. Now, uh, voters over the years in this state have repeatedly repeatedly rejected the idea of a graduated income tax. We have, everyone pays the same rate. What's your response to uh, the critics and research that claim that if this passes, it'll accelerate the out-migration of capital and investment from the state? Because m the thing about millionaires is they have the wherewithal to pick up and just move their businesses to lower tax states. So first of all, the research and data on that is uh, very mixed. So those who are opposed to the fair share amendment will cite the studies that seem to suggest there will be increasing out migration. One of those took a look at, I think it was Maryland, um, that after a major tax increase on the wealthiest showed a decrease in the number of millionaires paying taxes. It turns out that it wasn't because people were leaving the state, it was because the economy had dipped, this was in 2008, and people were making less money than they had been making. So you've got to watch out about the statistics and the statisticians in regard to this. And the Federal Reserve, among other places, has done a lot of studies uh, for states that have raised taxes and established the fact that there is no significant out-migration. Some, to be sure, but not that not statistically significant. If I may, let me just add one other point. We're hearing from many members of the business community that if we don't invest in roads and bridges and public transit and public education, we're not going to have the economic wherewithal to grow the economy and be the commonwealth we want to be. So I think 
depending on which side of the fair share amendment fight you're on, you can make a case for it or against it. And once, I want to remind our viewers, once, if in fact the court clears the way for this to be on the ballot, we'll be looking forward to hosting debates on that topic. Perhaps you could participate in I would be in thrilled. One of those. I'd we'll be thrilled to. I, I hope the SJC gives us that opportunity. We'll take a short break and we'll continue our conversation with the chairman of the House Committee on Revenue, Jay Kaufman, in a moment. So, stay with us.